That started with a friend of mine that I grew up helping him on his farm. And whenever I would say something that he thought was kind of a joke, like, uh, I think you should buy lunch today, he would go, bah, ha, ha, ha. And so I kind of picked it up and started when somebody would say something that's kind of stupid or I disagree with it, I'd go, oh, oh, oh. laugh at it. So I didn't always, not everybody that did it always laughed like Santa Claus. Is that why Santa does that when the kids tell him what he wants? Usually, want? because they, he knows they're not, not going to get it. <laughs> This is about transmission. What is this is not an exhaustive list of transmissions that don't have dipsticks, but it's going to give you a little bit of, of a heads up on it. And what you got here is you got, if you're asking why, maybe transmissions were shipped to the assembly line pre-filled, mm -hmm. they typically are. Like sometimes if you buy a crate transmission from a manufacturer, it'll come full of fluid. Another was a cost-saving factor of not having to produce the dipstick parts, which would be the tube. And I don't know. This is a this is Wayne, you know, postulating lifetime transmission fluids. Some of your Mercedes vehicles claim that you don't ever have to change the transmission fluid, and they don't even want you checking it to prevent pollution from spills. I don't really think that's the reason. Owners don't check the transmission fluid anyway most of the time, unless they're a real gearhead stickler for accuracy, and then sometimes they don't check it. Uh, critical fluid level has got to be exactly right. That's what I feel like the freezing is for. They don't want you having too much fluid. They don't want you having not enough fluid. They want it to be just right based on temperature. And unlike motor oil, the transmission fluid is going to move up and down on the dipstick with temperature. So what about, uh, what else changes fluid level with temperature? Well, A lot. Yeah. What did you say? Water. Coolant. Does that? It expands, and uh, the rest of them, all of them, expand and contract a little bit. But coolant and transmission fluid do the most. All right, and this right here is a Nissan CVT7 transmission. In the bottom of the pan is a 19 millimeter drain plug. But when it's removed, inside the threaded area, you got an internal tube with a hex head bolt. All right, and that is the check level or overflow pipe. So, whenever you put the fluid in there, and it goes up above there. And it's running out, you can tell. Right? That's basically fairly novel. Um, that's how a pond works. Right? Any of you guys had anything to do with building a pond? No, we have one. It's got one of those overflow. You got us overflow up in there, yeah. What about your commode tank? That's not that doesn't not set the level, it just keeps it from running over, running over your floor, right? He's got an outhouse. There you go. Wow. Daniel left and he's got all kinds of work he could be doing. All right. We're getting a new intake manifold for that motor, by the way. Yep. Thank you. I didn't even look for a used one anyway. I think we'd be able to do it anyway. All right, right here, the check level pipe can be removed allowing the location to double as a drain plug so you can actually take that out if you need to drain the transmission. You see, there's your overflow pipe when it's been took out of there. Okay? The procedure to fill and check it is extensive. It requires a special tool called a charging pipe. Screw it into the check level overflow pipe area. That requires the ability to pump fluid up into the transmission. And whenever it's, you know, just trickling out, that's when it's full. But you want it to be right at the top of that pipe. But there's also a temperature thing. Now this is a 2000 Lincoln LS. There's a couple of three different ways that these Lincolns do, but this particular one, fluid level, you got a fluid level tube, you see how the fluid is seen as, you know, fluid at the top of this, that's basically where the level needs to be. And then you got a, this is what it looks like when you look at it up in the pan. You were talking about this earlier, Jonathan. However, a lot of the time, this right here, and it's got some Loctite stuff on it, when you put your torque stuff in there, this will strip out. And so you may have to see this right here is the drain plug, but this goes up in there and you know whenever you pull this out, you should see a little bit of fluid, you know, running. This is from the inside of the pan. Uh, I keep these on hand usually, these extra plugs, because when you start trying to check the fluid on those, you got issues because that thing will strip out. All right, so you use the scan tool to monitor the transmission fluid temperature using the TFT pin in the scan tool. 
Start it up. Engine idle speed's got to be 650. And while you're proceeding with it, you run the engine until the transmission fluid temperature is between 80 to 120. It's got to be in that range in order for that to be an accurate test. If it's hotter than that, you're not going to get, you know, it's back so the fluid's going to be higher and you're going to wind up draining some out that you need. If it's, if it's colder than that, you may put some in that you don't need. But if you got it in that range, you're going to be okay. You move the range selector lever through each gear, you stop in each position and allow it to engage, place it in park, and with the engine running, position the vehicle on the hoist and set it as close to level as it possibly can. The ones that we see sometimes we got on the lift like this or that, not acceptable on that. All right, right here, you're going to hold your larger drain plug with a wrench and remove the small center fluid level indicating the plug is a 3686 Allen key, although it's not Allen. This one here, this is actually talking about the Lincoln LS, but it's the same basic principle, only you're using a, a Torx, and I think it's a T27 if I remember right. Uh, it's not as big as a 30, I don't believe, on the ones I'm talking about here. And then right here, you put a wall in there. When you put that little similar to that thing that we showed earlier, that brass one, you screw this in there, and there's a tool you can get here uh, where you basically, you know, shove it up in there. What you can do, you remember you guys used your big grease gun looking syringe? You know what I mean? And all that. So uh, you can use that uh, to put it in there too, but you gotta keep monitoring your temperature. You gotta hang it under the vehicle, position it upright, and close the transmission. So you open the end of the fluid hose and you push it, you know, you're going to put air pressure in there and it's going to shove fluid in it. Pretty handy, really, as a trend. You could build one of these things if you were, if you were Jonathan Price, because he likes to build things. Okay, right here we got a maximum pressure of 30 PSI to open the end of the vacuum pressure hose. And that's going to push that fluid in there. Add a pint of fluid into the pan, stop the process, release the air pressure, remove the nozzle, look at the fluid level. So it'll be draining back into the tool. And if it drains back into the canister, it's full. And so you keep on until you see it just coming in a trickle, like that right there. You want to put a hand vacuum pump on the open end of the vacuum pressure hose, apply pressure, and that all pull in the extra fluid trapped in the system, so on and so forth. So then you're going to put that back together, and that's not too complicated there. Now this is one I was just taking pictures up out there a while ago. I got all these pictures together on that. You're going to see some Mercedes transmissions uh, like this one here. This particular transmission here is one we pulled out of a 2007 uh, Dodge Charger with a 5.7 in it. And it's a, this particular plug right here sits for dealer use only. And this $88 dipstick, I was telling him, you can buy one of these dipsticks that will do the same job from Dorman for $13.50. Because uh, they accidentally sent me one when I was ordering a dipstick for something else. The guy at the parts house sent me a, a $13.50 Dorman dipstick that does the same job. You notice this is marked in millimeters. When you stick that in there, and it's hard to see it here, but that cable that's attached to this, it, you know, it sticks way up out of there, and so it's not going to go all the way down. Uh, Jonathan was kind of confused, and he was trying to cram it all the way in there, but that's not how it works. So this goes straight in there. You notice the bottom of that is flat, and it goes straight down. Notice how it's going straight down to the pan? So it's not going in there at an angle, it's going straight down in there, and you're basically reading the depth of the fluid on that. So how are you supposed to know where the fluid's supposed to be? Well, you got to put it in park on a level service, take the dipstick tube cap off, put the service brake on, start it, let it run in idle with it in park, shift it through the mode several times when it's stationary to make sure everything's full up in the transmission, warm it up, wait two minutes, check the oil level with the engine run, and put it uh, into the transmission fill tube until the dipstick tip contacts the wall and pull it out again, read off the wall level. And when it, it's going to go to the bottom of the pan so you're measuring the depth of it. All right. This is the little graph they have. You see, they give you a lot more latitude than the Ford people do. Basically, if you're looking at 20 millimeters, 25, 30, this needs to come together. At 130 degrees Fahrenheit, it should be between 50 and 55 millimeters deep according to that stick. That's not complicated. Understanding this, Dustin Monaghan, is basically the key to not looking like a buffoon if you're trying to check the transmission fluid in one of these. Because if you just stick it down in there and see the BI8 and you know what this temperature is, then you're not making it. You gotta see how much difference there is between a 70 degree when you, like out there at ambient temperature, and if it's about up around 180 degrees, you're going to see a giant difference of like 50 millimeters, which is a heck of a big uh, 
change. All right. So some of them, you can use a sensor port. If you think of an accessible speed sensor on the transmission, on some of these other transmissions, you can actually put fluid in there. All right, there's transmissions that have bolts that look like fill plugs, but are band anchor bolts. If you decide to look for a fill plug, make sure you know what you're unbolting. If you take one of those band uh, anchor bolts out and you hear something go click inside the transmission, you may have a record breaking comeback. You know what I mean? So don't just take a bolt out and say, I think I'll jerk this bolt out of here and maybe I'll be able to put transmission fluid in this hole. Obviously, if you pull a sensor out, you're not going to get in trouble. Uh, I've actually seen this kind of thing happen where somebody takes the wrong thing out and you see or hear something move in there. You can't just put the bolt back in because now the thing that it was holding has moved away from the hole and you can't put it back in the hole unless you pull the transmission apart. See, so that, that's a really uh, serious thing you need to be paying attention to. All right. This is what appears to be a fill plug on a CVT-7 just above the pan. See that? See that right there? That looks like a fill plug. You say, well, I mean, I think I'll just screw that out of there. Well, you can get in some trouble there. Well, inside, you can see the overflow pipe is taller than the plug. Well, if you put that in there, you're not going to be able to get enough fluid in there to get up to the top of the overflow pipe, right? That's not working there either. So what's the point in that? Why do you even have it there, okay? So you got to put it in through a higher point. You got Toyota's U660E. You got a drain plug and a check level pipe at the bottom. Similar to the CVT-7. You got a little tool here. All right. This transmission does have a designated fill plug high above on the rear cover. I mean, you see it's a year cover to the rear cover. It's got letters. Uh, WS on the plug, identifying the type of transmission fluid it uses. Pay attention to that. Knowing how to do this is important. Well, it's your DLC connector. Use a scan tool to monitor transmission fluid temperature, and they got a manual method. You can jump the ALDL connector with an optional special service tool. Uh, that one there, I'm going to say that number, CG and TC, 4 and 13. You know those two. You got better pay attention to what you're shortening there. With the brakes applied, move the lever from park to the S mode position and select gear S1 to S6 to move the shift lever back to the P position. Okay. All right. Now the ATF, Tim, put it in there. If he's got, see if you've got, this is your look, you're looking at your shift connect, uh, indicator here. If it's good temperature, it's off. If it's higher than normal, it's on. If it's lower than normal, it's blinking. See what I mean? So, so basically, this is giving you an indication with that D indicator with those two jumpers if you've got the right amount in there. So if you keep putting it in there, see, in other words, if what I'm saying is you put it in whatever your optimal temperature is. If it's here or here, you got to have it so it's not on or blinking before you add the fluid or you'll get the wrong amount in there. Now some people improvise by getting, you know, pumps and stuff like this and pump it in there. Uh, and this, some of these shops will do this. Uh, you know, Wayne uh, was saying that he had seen this kind of thing. Uh, 1988 to 89 100 power steering pump speed sensor assembly. You spin that thing and you can move fluid with it. See, it's basically a pretty cool little deal. All right. This one shop that he visited has got a pump and a motor mounted on a cart with a car battery driving it. And it gets the job done, pumps the transmission fluid into the transmission real easy. Uh, now I'm going to tell you a little bit of another thing about this transmission fluid business. And this is something that everybody uh, needs to kind of get familiar with because there's a lot of shops that now that have these uh, um, machines like the one I've got out here uh, and whenever we uh, hook up uh, has anybody done a transmission fluid flush with a machine you know how do you think that would work if you're going to use a machine to do a transmission fluid flush how do you make that happen how would you what do you think would be the best way to do it well, what I do, and uh, what they want you to do here, is disconnect from the radiator, the power, I mean the, not power steering, the transmission fluid line, and you hook the machine up in between. Now, I need to show you guys this so you all know how to do it. We got this big hose. Now, except we got to you unhook the uh, line from the uh, radiator from the cooler, and then you're going to hook a line up that's got a special, you know, quick connector on it. And a line that hooks up to the radiator with a special quick connector on it uh, because you're going through the cooler. And then you're going to hook up this, this two uh, 
It's a sort of what we call a, an H hose. And I can show you that. I'll be holding it in my hand and have the thing in here. Uh, do you know where that machine is? The one where I do that? I've never seen it. Sit right here. I'm going to go get it. I'm not, I'm not, it ain't going to take long. Here, hold this door open for me. Okay. Here it is, right here. See this machine right here? All right, now, after you have, see these, see all these fittings down here? You see that, that coupler on there? On there? That one there. See, they, all of these on one end, they have a certain look to them. The other end, they look all the same. Okay, so after you've taken your line loose from radiator and you've put the appropriate ones of these on there, you're basically going to be looking at something looking like this. You know, with this coming from the transmission, this going to the cooler. All right, all right. And then you're going to take this thing right here. So you notice there's a valve in the middle of it. And then you're going to click it in there. You're going to hook that in there. Wait a minute. I'm sorry, I'm wrong. Hook it in here, like that. We're going to rip fluid everywhere in a minute. And hook it like that. Okay. Now, with that valve open, you've got this hooked up so that it's between, right? You got it? It's basically between your radiator, I mean your transmission and your cooler. All right, with this cranked up, uh, with this open, you're going to crank the engine, you're going to see which way the fluid goes. Pay attention to which way the fluid goes. Whichever way it goes is the way that's going to, is how you're going to know which goes what. If it's coming out here and going in there, what is that telling you about these two? If it's coming out here, this goes to the dirty oil. And this one goes to the clean oil, right? So then you close this. With this still hooked up, you close this so that it caps that off in between there. And when you crank it up, every bit of the transmission fluid that's coming out of here goes in the dirty oil tank, which you can see over here. And because you're going to you're going to hook up these two other hoses, these connectors right here. But you got to know which one to hook where. Okay, the dirty oil goes in here, and the clean oil is pushed out of here. Got me? And. Uh, in so doing, you're able to change every last bit of the transmission fluid in there. All right, the best thing to do is not lose any of the adapters, you know. All right, so these adapters all came with it. I had to build adapters whenever, like when I was doing it on my yellow Jeep Cherokee, there was not an adapter in this machine to do that. This is a MotorVac TransTech 3. Works really good. Now, another thing, and this was really brilliant, this one guy that was here that, uh, that I was working with, that I, telling about this when we first got this. I said, there's a dirty oil, empty waste. As soon as you get through with the transmission service with this thing, you do not put the dirty oil in the clean oil tank. Because you don't want dirty oil in your clean oil tank, right? I told one guy, don't put dirty oil in the clean oil tank. The first thing he did was stick the dirty oil hose in the clean oil tank and get empty waste. But you're supposed to put it in there, oil, your waste oil, right? Just put it in there. and. Every time, as soon as you finish the transmission service, empty the dirty oil tank. Do not park this thing with the dirty oil tank full, or even half full, or even a third full, because what that does is it screws the pressure sensors up in the machine, and I got to call somebody to come fix it because you let it sit in there all night without draining the dirty oil tank. Always drain the dirty oil tank when you're through. Drain it until this thing tells you. This thing's got a microprocessor in it. All right, here's another thing. While you're doing your transmission fluid exchange, while you're doing your transmission fluid exchange, you're going to basically be holding the engine up usually about 1,500. That's somebody sitting in the truck. You got to have good pressure here on there so that this thing will know that it's doing its job. When it's done, it's got a beeper so loud you'll hear it all over the shop. Beep, beep, because it hooks up to the battery, you know. But anyway, everybody needs to get familiar with this. You know, we're probably going to do one. You know, probably one day next week or whatever. I've been trying to sell somebody on a transmission, full transmission fluid change, but you got to use, like, if it's a 12 quart, the way that I do this, if it's a 12 quart uh, transmission that's overhaul, you know, capacity, I put 12 quarts in there, I pump them all the way through. It's better to put like 13 in there. And then I get five more quarts, drop the pan, change the fluid and filter. So you're basically going to use 16, 18 quarts in a 12 quart to make sure it's full. You got me? And make sure that you've changed your filter and everything's cleaned up and all that. 
but that changes the fluid in the torque converter and everything else. Instead of having, you know, eight or nine quarts of dirty fluid and five quarts of clean fluid, you know, you're better off. Now, look at that. I made a mess all four. So, but anyway, that's something that everybody needs to kind of get familiar with, and I, be, I need to be able to set this thing up so everybody can see how it works. And uh, whenever we finally do that, everybody needs to be kind of watching, because I know sometimes if you get a little bored while somebody else is doing a job, you want to walk away and say, I'll worry about this later. But uh, you, may get, you may work at somewhere where they do these. Mm -hmm. They do a lot of them at places like Express Oil Change and all that kind of thing. And that machine is a really good machine to have on stuff like that. Now, what we're going to do...